Hello, everybody. I'm Frank Morano. You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. John Tobacco is on assignment. He'll be back on Monday. A ton of interesting news to get to. Mike Bloomberg appears to be jumping into the presidential race. We'll get into that and have a team of experts help analyze what that means for the existing field and for President Trump. Speaking of President Trump, just moments ago, uh, he spoke right outside the White House about uh, this whole impeachment inquiry. He went off on a number of subjects, including Mike Bloomberg, including the impeachment inquiry, but he had particularly harsh words for the whistleblower. Whistleblower is a disgrace to our country, a disgrace. And the whistleblower, because of that, should be revealed. And his lawyer, who said the worst things possible two years ago, he should be sued. And maybe for treason, maybe for treason, but he should be sued. His the president wants the whistleblower sued for treason. There's a big debate within the media and within the halls of Congress over whether or not we should reveal the whistleblower's name and identity. I happen to think we should. I happen to think if the public is going to make uh, assertions and make judgments about whether this person is telling the truth, we ought to know who they are, what their track record is, what their politics are and what their associations within the government are. That being said, that's my opinion. You may have a different view on this program, at least until John's back. We're going to respect the anonymity of the whistleblower, which makes me very, very pleased to introduce you to um, the person who's sitting in my chair, uh, where I normally am, our guest co-host for the day. We actually have one of the biggest newsmakers on the planet right now, possibly even as big a newsmaker as, as Donald Trump or Mike Bloomberg, we're very pleased to be joined by the whistleblower. Now, as you can see, thank you, whistleblower, we are protecting the anonymity of the whistleblower. We don't want his identity revealed, or, or her identity, I'm not going to say. I mean, um, we're protecting this person's anonymity. Um, whistleblower, do you feel at all as if you've been, I don't know, unfairly maligned by the president and his defenders throughout this whole process? But now, what do you say to those who say that, well, look, if you're going to make all these accusations about the president having inappropriate conversations about Ukraine, about having a quid pro quo, that maybe you should put your own identity out there? Well, well, it's, he's the whistleblower for a reason. Uh, he's the whistleblower for a reason, folks. All right, uh, so you don't mind sticking around for the rest of the show? All right. So this is going to be exciting. The whistleblower is here. Uh, coming up a little bit later, we're going to dive headfirst into this Michael Bloomberg situation. And we're going to be joined uh, in a little while by the person that was beat by Michael Bloomberg in the 2001 mayoral election, the very first election Mike Bloomberg ever won. Mark Green is going to be here. Dominic Carter, who uh, covered Mike Bloomberg throughout his entire political career, he's going to be here next. And we're still monitoring this Roger Stone trial. Uh, we're going to get some ac expert analysis from Kristen Davis, who was formerly the Manhattan Madam. And uh, one of the other big stories that is, that actually, it's ironic that so many of the big political stories today come out of Alabama, because not only has Michael Bloomberg filed, or is planning to file today, for the Alabama presidential primary, but Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III is going to file for his old U.S. Senate seat. We're going to break that, that down with our political panel. Jeff Sessions appeared on Arrival Network, the Fox News channel, with Tucker Carlson yesterday. And a lot of people are bringing up, well, wait a minute, he didn't do the right thing as attorney general. He shouldn't have recused himself. This is what Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III said yesterday. I did the thing I had to do under the rules of the Department of Justice. I, the, the senior advisors told me that this is what the rules require, the regulations required, and uh, I read them, and I don't think there was any out for me. But I know how painful it was for the president. This is, the whole thing was very painful for him, and he saw this as a pivotal moment, but uh, painful and as prolonged as it was, it did clear him of Russian collusion, and I'm certainly glad that finally happened. I think uh, Jeff Sessions actually acquitted himself pretty well yesterday, and we're going to delve into that throughout the remainder of the program. But as far as this whole Russia situation, as compared to the Ukraine situation, it seems to me the big thing that they were missing in the Russia situation, the Russia Gate versus the Ukraine Gate situation, is with Russia, there was really no whistleblower. Isn't that right, whistleblower? 
Yeah, I mean, if they had a guy like the whistleblower, someone with his integrity, someone with his track record in government there for Russiagate, you never know. The president might have had a, a very di much different situation. What do you think, whistleblower? Uh, now, um, while we're paying attention to the 2020 presidential race, the whistleblower and I are also keeping an eye on the 2024 presidential race. Uh, the 2024 presidential race apparently has a new entrant. It is a household name. No, it's not a Bush, thank goodness. No, it's not a Clinton, thank goodness. It's not even a Trump. The newest entrant into the 2024 presidential race is none other than Kanye West. When I run for president in 2024, we're going to definitely know what y'all laughing at. When I run for president in 2024, we would have created so many jobs that I'm not going to run on my walk. What I'm saying is, when y'all read the headlines, Kanye's crazy, this is that, this is that. It's like one in three African Americans are in jail, and all the celebrities are in jail also, because they can't say nothing. They have no opinion. You know, as fun as it might be to mock Kanye West and his wife Kim Kardashian, uh, and look, there's a lot to mock, especially with Kanye. Um, he and Kim Kardashian have done great work when it comes to criminal justice reform. They've gotten a lot more people out of prison than Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton ever have. So uh, maybe those of us that are laughing, and I'm still in the laughing stage with Kanye, maybe those of us that are laughing at Kanye come 2024, who knows? Perhaps he'll be laughing at us. This year, from what I understand, he is supporting Donald Trump. So Mike Bloomberg, Jeff Sessions, the whistleblower, uh, we're going to get into it throughout the entire program. The whistleblower is sticking around with us throughout the entire show, and we appreciate his time. We know how in demand he is. He had to dodge uh, three congressional subpoenas just to be here today. Uh, but none of those are what I'm speaking, frankly, about. As I explained yesterday, as a radio talk show host and a radio producer, I am much like a nurse, a doctor, an epidemiologist on the front lines of an epidemic. I notice these epidemics, I notice these problems before the rest of the world sees them. And um, I've noticed something very, very disturbing over the last 10 to 15 days. Radio stations around the country are already switching to Christmas music. Already. They're playing Christmas music before Halloween's even over. But unfortunately, this is not a phenomenon that's unique to the world of radio stations nor of music. Around the country, people are putting... We are almost two whole months away from Christmas. It is way too early to put Christmas decorations up. Um, I know some of you are organized. I know some of you like to get ahead of the game. I know some of you are festive. But the only decorations that should be going up right now are fall decorations, Thanksgiving decorations. Because it, to, you do two things with Christmas decorations that are prematurely strewn. One is you put pressure on everybody else. And it becomes a game of people in different neighborhoods keeping up with the Joneses. You put up your Christmas lights, then Johnny or Sally says, oh, look, we, the, the Smiths put their Christmas lights up, we've got to put ours up. And it becomes this race to the bottom. If this continues, we are going to start decorating for Christmas in February. It's got to end. It's got to stop. I would love a gentleman's agreement or a gentle lady's agreement if you're uh, among the fairer sex. No Christmas decorations until Black Friday. Let Thanksgiving do its due. The other reason is it puts a lot of stress on those of us because once we start seeing Christmas decorations go up, we recognize we haven't shopped for anything yet. And then it creates a whole nother month of stress that's unnecessary. Now, that's my opinion. And the frankly speaking commentaries don't represent the views of Newsmax nor of Liquid Lunch TV. And apparently, if you're one of these early birds, according to a, a new study, you're actually much happier and much better off than I am. Uh, because researchers have found 
that decorating early for the holidays has a number of mental health benefits. For starters, it lets neighbors know you're especially friendly. Um, that, that can come in handy for folks. And they also examine uh, that residents who, in this study, residents who decorated for Christmas but who have few friends on the block, they're using decorations and other cues as a way of communicating their accessibility to neighbors. Apparently, in general, you're going to be a happier person if you decorate Christmas early. My vote is find another way to be happy. Uh, I mean, take an antidepressant, do some yoga, how about some meditation, take a nap, see a movie. Uh, there's no reason for you to put Christmas decorations up this early. It's inappropriate and it puts undue stress on everybody else. Now, uh, let me update folks on in terms of what's happening with this Roger Stone trial. Uh, now, I don't believe there was any whistleblower in the Roger Stone case, was there? <laughs> Well, okay, well, so the whistleblower himself has some very strong, uh, strong feelings about that, as you can see. But um, the Roger Stone trial is going on right now in Washington, D.C., and the person who's testifying is Randy Credico, the world's least credible man and the world's worst impressionist. And we're going to examine the issue of Randy Credico's credibility uh, in just about 20 minutes or so when Kristen Davis, the, for, the, um, the former Manhattan madam, who's a close friend of both mine and Roger Stone, and someone that actually ran for office with Randy Credico in 2010, she's going to be here to help analyze his um, credibility. Now, let me update you on what's happening. Um, now, we don't have cameras in the courtroom. We would love to bring this for you live. Ca Whistleblower, isn't that outrageous that we don't get to see the, 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 these trials go on as they happen? <laughs> so, Randy Credico is being uh, cross-examined right now uh, by Roger Stone's attorneys. So, Randy Credico's in the witness box. Um, the lawyer asked if Credico ever delivered messages to Stone from Julian Assange. Credico said no. The lawyer says, even though in all fairness you led Roger Stone to believe you were one, meaning uh, an intermediary between him and Julian Assange. Credico, I disagree. Very well, we'll go through some items. Then they spend the next 10 minutes talking over one another, uh, but Judge Jackson just said that the person with the hardest job in the room is the court reporter. This is a circus, folks. And wait until Dr. Jerome Corsi and Rick Gates and these others testify. It's only going to get worse. Now, the defense just showed... Credico, a tweet he sent out about WikiLeaks in 2016, not yet submitted as evidence so the jury can't see it yet. Uh, and he was asked if he saw anything substantive about the tweet. Credico said no. What does it all mean? We're going to get into it with uh, Kristen Davis in a little bit. Coming up next, legendary New York political reporter Dominic Carter is here. He'll break down Michael Bloomberg's presidential candidacy for us. Tell Spia has a shot at winning the Democratic nomination. How are the Democrats are viewing this? And what it might mean for President Trump. Dominic Carter joins the whistleblower and me next here on Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV.